All right. So now that you know that we're going to create an apparatus, we shall begin. Let me talk you through the process. We shall begin by creating a new document. Uh, I'll begin by creating a 4x4. Uh, this is 23. Uh, I'll subject it to inches. I want to create a 4x4 inches. But this is no problem to worry about. And the first thing we're going to do, it's always okay to trace. There's no problem. <laughs> we're not going to be tracing. We, we are going to be combining our skills. But time will come with practice and you'll be able to just adjust and put anything. So I'm going to browse or explore anywhere that I have my files. And here I have my file that I downloaded from, from the internet. I'll drag the file and put it in Illustrator. So you just drag to the icon like this and Illustrator launches. And then you come and drag it into the middle of the document. All right, so you can see that our document looks bigger than the image. This is nothing to worry about because we already know how to adjust the artboard. So I can click on the artboard and then I scale one other side of the artboard from this side and then to this side, even the bottom. I, I'm just making sure that the artboard covers the whole image. Rather than reducing the image, we've not talked about um, add adjustments or transformation. So I, I'm trying to avoid that, but we shall talk about it in the next video. All right. So I need to exit the artboard tool. So I go ahead and choose the selection tool. So I exit the artboard. Now, remember we talked about layers. So this is on the first layer. I'm going to go ahead and lock this layer so that I can't select the image abruptly or by accident. So I'm going to come here and click and create a new empty layer. So all my uh, other creations are going to be on top of this layer. All right. So what tool would you subject for the fault thermometer? All right, so I'm going to come and get, it can be a cylinder all rounded uh, rectangle. So I'm going to select the rounded rectangle and then I drag like that. So I've created the first head of the thermometer, uh, the body, then I can also create the head. Okay, so let's just look at shape arrangement first. All right, so I can go ahead and give the head a black fill right that's okay now what shapes do you think would better create the round bottom flask uh, we demonstrated before so a rectangle is not a bad shape so what i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead and select the head of the thermometer and the belly and then i group them so i'll go to object then i choose group All right so i can put this aside because it already takes the right shape so that I can concentrate on the other. All right, so what am I going to do? I'm going to select from top to bottom. Great. And then I, I create an ellipse. So I'm dragging. I'll cancel so that I press shift, I drag. I've created an ellipse. I just make sure that they are all assembled in the same alignment. Great. And then I can go ahead and group them, but that won't help because if I lose, you can say, I don't want this kind of, you know, uh, conjoinment happening because it's not there in the original image. All right, so I'm going to select this and I empty the fill so that we can see what is happening behind. Great, so what do we need to do? As usual, we're first going to isolate one object, then we get our scissor and we cut that place and we also cut this point then i'll get the selection tool and i delete the top unwanted part so it's the same thing that i'm going to do to the bottom i double click it get the scissor cut this point and i also cut this point then i i make sure that i've selected this then i delete the unwanted part you saw what happens when you make a selection with something else. I'm going to double click elsewhere. So I'll drag. I have no problem with dragging. If, if I had unlocked the image, you can see I'm shifting the image, something that I don't want. That's why I want this locked. Okay, so I've unshift, I've, all right. So I want this locked so that I can drag and shift select, then go to object, 
path average both so that they meet at the same point. Again, object path join. So that is joined. I drag select the others. Object path average both. The shortcuts are there too. And then I can join. All right. So we have the round bottom flask. So I can also create the head here. Okay. I can create the head. I don't want to create curves. We haven't got there yet. So I don't want to get worried about that. So I can create the head, which can also be a cylinder combined with something else. Okay. And then this is a rectangle. I just make sure that they meet into the same, onto the same center through a line. Okay then everything is okay because if I give this a black color and then give the one at the back a white color, okay, you can see that what is at the back is uh, being obscured by what is at the front. So control outer calibrate all the same as going to object, arrange, bring to front, okay, or bring forward. And then I have that worked upon. Okay, so I can group these two, control G, so it moves as a group. So I just wanted to see uh, what is behind. So which means if I bring back my thermometer, okay, and put it in place. All right, you can see it works the magic behind that. Okay. So I can even get this, uh, it's already in the group, but I would have pushed it behind, okay? So that it's behind the thermometer. All right, so that is done. I can hide the image temporarily to see what we have achieved. All right, so let me unhide the image. So let's go ahead and work on the cooler and look at the cooler. This to me seems like a rounded rectangle again. So I'll just create a rounded rectangle like this. And then I just go ahead and select the, the selection tool. The first thing I want to make sure that uh, the edges are smooth. Then I go to the end and I transform it like this. Okay, so let me make it a bit smaller, just like that. So I'm trying to add it just to fit the, the shape. Great. So I can give it no fill so that I make sure that I know what is running behind it. Okay. So now you know you can create these. And these are very simple. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we create the cork. So the cork. Um, uh, that is rounded, but I'm going to sell, I've created a rectangle and I'm just going to make sure that one point is inclined at the other. So that point there and this point here, this point here and this point here. All right. So that is the cork. I can also create another outlet and then adjust the points from one side to the other. And there is, no, there is no problem with me cutting if I needed to cut, okay? There is no problem with me cutting if I needed to cut. But all I can do here, because I can cut again and achieve the same output. All right, let's do that. I, I think it will be better for our shading. So I'll double click and then get the scissor Cut at this point and also cut at this point. All right, so I've missed the point to cut. I just want to cut within that red vector. Then I delete. Okay, so I needed to select the object and I delete so that I don't delete one part of the handle. So I'm going to double click again on the object, get and cut. So I cut at that point and also cut at this point. So I've missed the point of cutting. That's the warning. All right, so I need to select the object and delete it. Great. So I'm going to double click again and then select these two points. I'll drag select and then average both points. 
and then join. Okay, I can even drag this in to make a curve. That's no problem. I'll select these two, average those points, and then join. I can drag the kink again to make the curve. All right, so if I go to this and I give it a black fill, okay, obviously it will be obscuring this other one, and then I can do the same. So I can do the same with this lower port part, okay, and do the necessary adjustments. Okay, so you drag and make sure you have the right container. <laughs> All right, so I'm not going to do that, uh, but let me hide and you see what we have, okay? Because I want to save time. I don't want the video to be so long. So I want to look at this part. How do we make sure that we achieve this part? Because this, this part is kind of tricky. All right, so let me do this. I'm going to create um, a rectangle first. Then I created another rectangle coming down. Great, I can shift the uh, positions. All right, so I may not need this upper, upper point, but uh, let me first select both of them and I make sure that inside is hollow by choosing none on the fill. Okay, so I'm going to get the scissor and cut this point and this point. So I'm remaining with this object, I delete that. Again, I get the scissor. I'm going to isolate this part, this object, cut this point. I've missed my point of cutting. Cut this point and cut this point. Again, select and delete the upper point because it's unwanted. All right. So I'm going to go out of isolation and I select these two points. I make sure first of all they are average. So that's right clicking, then I right click and join them. All right. So I want to lose some of these points. So I'll drag this point to this, uh, to this part, but let, let, let this point stay there because I have some other item to, to work with it. So I'll get this point again, then I average, then I join. All right, so someone will be wondering, how do I achieve the curve? Where are there? Well, there are very many ways. The first way is selecting this uh, add adjustment point here, and then you drag. I've achieved the first part of the curve. I can do the same by doing it again here, okay? All right, so this point is what I was talking about. It was affecting my curve, but I can move it Okay, now there's, there are several points, but no worries. I can move it on the inside. All right, so the reason I'm not deleting this point, because when I press delete, I'll be deleting the point and there will be a gap. That's something I don't want, okay? It's something I don't want, because there, there is a, a, way, a better way, but we've not learned of it, so I don't want to be, <laughs> I don't want to be taking in what we cannot swallow yet. All right, so if you want to achieve the shape below, okay, I do understand that my point is off. So the shape below is easy, as easy as making it pointed like that. Great, so I'll come to my layers, then I hide, and you see we've achieved also that, and unhide. Okay, so I want the bottom, so the bottom is easy also. The first thing is the base comes from some oval shape. So we already have the ellipse. So I'll drag around an elliptical shape like this to create my base. To create my base. Great. Then I want to achieve this sort of... Um, uh, cone or, you know, triangular shape, which also comes from a rectangle. <laughs> okay, people were, were wondering how we create it. So, 
it is as simple as moving this point at the extreme end here. Okay, so I'll just make sure I, I, uh, it reaches that point. I just want to make sure that it cuts uh, across because we've not learned the leading points yet. And then that. Great. So you already see what we have. So which means I can come again with my isolation tactics and I isolate this part, get my scissor, delete this point, and then also delete this point of joining here. Great. All right, so I double click, double click this point, delete this point, delete this point. So I don't want the upper part, so I'll select and delete. Now, at this moment, <laughs> we're talking about what we have always been warning you about. I cannot drag select here because I have more than two points in certain instances, okay? For example, this has more than one point. All right, so it is either I add it just and then get and, and shift select. So I have this point, I shift select and get the other, then I can average them and then join them. All right, so it won't give me the shape that I want, but at least you've seen what we are able to achieve. I'm not worried about that because we, we're not there yet at the point of deleting, at the <laughs> uh, saturnity of deleting points, but at least we can join points. Great. So I've, reached, I've achieved the lower part. So I'm going to achieve the upper part still. As you already guessed it, okay. All right, so I'm just <laughs> observing, but you already have the guess that at this moment, I'm looking at achieving the shape rather than unifying certain points. I'll just get and get that. So the middle here is one part that is unwanted. I can delete. I press delete on the keyboard. Then I do the same for this. I cut this point. I also cut this point here. All right, so I delete the bottom. Great, so I can come and get these two points. And then I choose to average those two points by right-clicking and choosing average, then do the same again and choose join. So right-click and choose average, do the same and choose join. Great. So what do you think is with our apparatus? Let me hide and you can see what we've achieved so far. All right, I'm not going to go so long into this video, but I want, us, I want to say how do we achieve one stand? So the stand... It looks like a cylinder to me, which cylinder can be achieved with a rectangular object. But then apart from that, how about this? So I'm going to drag again a rectangle. Remember, we can move points. So which means I can move this point to that end, this point to this end, and this point to this end, this point to this end. All right, so I drag again. And then I'm going to move these two points. Lastly, I drag again. Okay. So I'm going to move this point here. This point. And then this point lastly to this. And then this lastly to this. I've been able to achieve the objects. So I'm going to select them. One, two, I'm shift selecting, two, and then three. Then I group them. I can even give them the brown color. Okay. So I'll just push it behind since it's in a group. I'll select this and also give it an orange color. Okay. Then you can see the rest of the objects. I can select this and give it a blue color. 
that light blue. I can select this and give it a different color. All right. So we're going to see in other videos how to create these liquids. There's no problem. But in this case, if I hide, this is what we've managed to achieve of our apparatus. All right. So you can see that you can achieve more. Okay. Be it the handles, you can achieve them. If I zoom in, this looks like um, a rounded rectangle here. And then this looks like a rectangle here. So you can see, in fact, we've not used more than, you know, a few of the shapes we've been, been talking about. And then again, this looks like a rectangle here. Okay, so I'll click elsewhere. Then I come back and create a rectangle here and another one here. What if I give all of these a gray color or a light blue? So I'll just select the object selection tool, shift select all these. And guess what? I give them a darker gray color. I can even lose the, <laughs> the bounding part. Then if I hide the image and then I scroll out, this is what I have. Okay. So you can go up to different uh, uh, times and experiments, and then you, you are able to create what we've been able to create. All right, so let's meet in the next video. We're going to make things simpler. But I, I, get you get, uh, I hope you get the whole aspect of the whole uh, thing of coming around with different images and outcomes based on the primitive objects that we already have. All right, let's meet in that next video. Thank you so much for watching this one.